Welcome to Dr. Piercy's An Introduction to Java Server Pages, the JSP Component Model. In this video, we will review the components of a MVC-based web application. You'll understand how Java Server Pages fit into this MVC structure, and you'll learn some important terms that are related to JSPs. Here we see our MVC component model. There are two sides to every MVC application. There's a client side and there's a server side. On the client side, this is where you might use your web browser or mobile phone app to view a page that you asked for from the internet. When you ask for something, it's called a request. What you get back is known as a response. We can divide whatever's created or what we see into three basic separations of concern. Structure, and this is the data structure of the page handled by HTML. Style, how the page is laid out, the colors that are used and how it looks. This is handled by a technology called CSS. And behavior, how the page behaves when we try to do something on the page. This is handled by a technology called JavaScript. In this set of videos, we are going to concentrate on the server side. These are the things on the back end. When we make a request for something, these are the things that work to fulfill our request and send us a response. So all requests come into the web server. The web server will then determine what needs to happen. It will ask for certain things to occur based on our request. The goal of the web server is to ask for those assets that need to run and those assets will then recreate a response which it will be up to the web server to send back to the right place. The web server will generally connect to something known as an application server. There are many ways to put applications together on this server. One important model is known as the MVC design pattern. This stands for model, view, and control. We see in this picture these three elements working together to take a request and then form a response. In the Java world, the controller is handled by a, a technology known as a servlet. The view is handled by our subject for today, which is the JSP. The model is generally plain old Java objects. Many applications on the server side also connect to a data server and then a database in order to query for the data needed to create the response. Java Server Pages, or JSP, is the specification created by Sun, but now owned by Oracle, that extends the Java Servlet API. This is in order to generate dynamic web pages on a web server. Dynamic meaning they could change depending on the data that's held in the request. With JSP, developers can create dynamic pages by combining static elements like HTML or XML or even photos or videos with Java code. In this case, the Java code will run on the server side and the static elements and the results of the Java code will be sent back to the client. JSPs are generally used as the view component in an MVC application, but they can be used as the controller component if desired, and that's how we'll work with them in this set of videos. So for us, and for the time being, we're going to follow a JSP component model. In this case, notice that the controller and view are combined as the JSP. It will act as both. This is just to learn JSPs and their capabilities, so it's only for the time being. The ultimate goal is to get to the MVC design pattern, where we use servlets and JSPs together to separate the concerns. A couple of important concepts we'll want to know about before we get into building our JSP, and these have to do with what the web server creates for us when a request comes in. When a request comes in, the web server will automatically create a request object. The request object holds information that pertains to the request, such as the IP address of the requester and the specific items that were requested from the server side. Also, when the request comes in, a response object will be created. This object is available so that as the application develops the response, it can add it to this object, and then the web server will have the appropriate information it needs to send back to the client. 
Both the request and the response objects are available for our JSPs to use, but there's no persistence. This means that once the response is sent, the request and response disappear. A new set of request and response objects are created with each new request. Both the response and request objects are available for us to use within JSP code. We do this as we use any other object using dot notation, where we mention the name of the object followed by a method call. For example, we might use the getParameter method of the request object to request a value that was sent from the client for the variable text name. One other thing to note about the request and response objects, these are declared and instantiated by the web server. So when it's time to run our JSP code, they're already created. And we do not have to declare nor instantiate these two objects. We simply can use them in the JSP. For further information about JSPs, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.